Okay, today we're going to talk about a little thing that is quite a challenge in Physics 20 called inclined planes. Inclined planes are basically just when we have an object sitting on a ramp, uh, and we have to deal with all the forces that are acting on that object, either up or down the ramp. Now, I put three tips here that can help you solve these inclined plane problems. The first tip being the force of gravity will always play a role. The force of friction opposes the motion of the object on the ramp is the second tip. And the last one is F net is not just mass times acceleration, but also the vector sum of all the forces up or down the ramp. What I do when I have a free body diagram for uh, inclined planes is I always start by drawing my true force of gravity straight down. So that starts in the center and goes straight down from the object. It's kind of hard to draw it on a computer, so bear with me. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. Then the next force I draw is what I call the force of gravity perpendicular, which is this one right here, force of gravity perpendicular. And then I draw another line connecting here, and I'll tell you about that one in just a moment. Now, the angle that forms in this corner is a right angle, and that makes our force of gravity our hypotenuse. Now, the angle of your ramp, which we usually call theta, shows up at the top here between your force of gravity and your force of gravity perpendicular. So that angle theta is also located right there. Now, some other uh, forces that actually show up on an inclined plane problem are your normal force, which is the force coming straight up off the object, Fn. And then another really important force that applies to these blocks is your force of gravity parallel to the surface, which is what actually tries to pull the block down the hill. So force of gravity parallel. Now, force of gravity parallel is actually also this side at the bottom of this triangle, which can be really useful because when we have the angle up here in the top corner, we can actually use right triangle trigonometry, which was so ka toa, to help us solve for any missing signs that we might have. So remember, your force of gravity right here is your hypotenuse, which is useful for sine and cosine. Your force of gravity parallel is your opposite side, which is useful for sine and tan. And uh, your force of gravity perpendicular is your adjacent side, which is useful for cosine and tan. Now, when we have a question that also contains friction, friction opposes the motion of the object on the ramp. So we have to be really careful where we put it. In a question like this, the only force that's not gonna be balanced out here is your force of gravity parallel. In other words, in this question, if there was no friction, this block would be sliding down this hill. So we have to take account for that by saying if there's friction present, we're going to have friction opposing the motion of that block, or at the very least where that block would be going if there wasn't any friction present. Okay, so in this first example, we have a block sitting at rest on a 15 degree incline. As soon as you hear anything about an incline, always draw a free body diagram. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Notice how squiggly mine are. Don't exactly have the steadiest hand. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to make this angle a perfect 15 degrees. You just have to draw this so you can get an idea of what's happening. So I'll put the block on this incline. Then I'm going to change pen color here so it's a little easier to see where my forces are going to be going. There we go. Remember what I said on the last slide was I always draw my force of gravity first. So I put a dot in the center here and bring a line straight down, force of gravity. Then I draw my force of gravity perpendicular, which is this one right here. Force of gravity perpendicular. I finish that triangle off and say that's a right angle. Again, notice my picture isn't perfect. It really doesn't matter. You're just doing this so you can get the right idea. The other force I draw is my force of gravity parallel, which is right here. And it also shows up down here to make the math a little bit easier. The 15 degrees that the question gave us shows up at the top of this triangle up here, 15. We have a normal force coming out the top of this block right here, so Fn is right there. And then last but not least, we have friction. Now we can see there's no other forces applying to here, but there's a really key uh, word that actually shows up in this question. It says the block is sitting at rest. If a block is sitting at rest, that just tells you that all your forces in this case are balanced. So your normal force is balanced out with your force of gravity perpendicular, but then that means your force of gravity parallel must be balanced out with a force of friction that is equal in magnitude. In other words, your force of friction is equal in magnitude to your force of gravity parallel, and that'll be really useful going forward. Now, speaking of force of friction, it tells us it right in the question, right there. 8.89 newtons is your force of static friction. Static just kind of means it's not moving, uh, so we can say, 
is also your force of gravity parallel. Now let's go back to the question which they worry, what are we actually looking for here? We've got all our little pieces of information scattered through this diagram. What are we really looking for? Well, the question is saying, find the magnitude of your normal force. So we're looking, I'll change colors here just so it's more clear. We're looking for our normal force. Judging by our free, free body diagram though, especially given that this block isn't moving, we should be able to determine that your normal force is equal to your force of gravity perpendicular. Now, that tells us we're gonna to need to use our triangle that we established, this right triangle right here, to help us find that force of gravity perpendicular. You know this opposite side, force of gravity parallel. You're wanting the adjacent side, force of gravity perpendicular. If you have opposite and adjacent, judging from so katoa, there we go, opposite and adjacent implies that you're gonna be using tan. So we can set up a trigonometric ratio using tan in this case. So we'll say tan of our angle, which was 15 degrees, equals the opposite side, which is force of gravity parallel, divided by the adjacent side, which is force of gravity perpendicular. Filling in these numbers here, because we actually know what our force of gravity parallel is, we can say, I'll just do it over here, tan 15 degrees, equals your force of gravity parallel, which is 8.89, divided by your force of gravity perpendicular, which is unknown. And remember, we're looking for a force of gravity perpendicular because it's going to be equal to our normal force. To find your force of gravity perpendicular, you just need to multiply this over to the other side. That'll give us force of gravity perpendicular times 10 15 equals 8.89. And then we want to get FG perpendicular all by itself by dividing by tan 15. So we can finally say that force of gravity perpendicular is 8.89 divided by tan, which, or tan 15, sorry, which gives us 33.1779 newtons. And remember, judging by our free body diagram, that this is also going to be equal to your normal force. So your normal force is 33.1779 newtons. Now, of course, we've got to watch our question though carefully. The question gave us three significant digits here and three significant digits here. That tells us our answer needs to be in three significant digits. So I'm going to say that Fn, your normal force, to three significant digits is 33.2 newtons. All right, so this last question, there's going to be a lot to it here. There's going to be a lot more work that we'll have to do on this one. Uh, first thing we notice right off the bat, I'll let you read it, but we see we have a 20 degree slope. So as always, draw yourself a free body diagram. Doesn't have to be perfect as always uh, with a 20 degree slope. Now the toboggan is going to be resting on this hill. Or actually, I think more appropriately, I should say it'll be accelerating up the hill at a rate of 0 0.40 meters per second squared. When you have an acceleration up a hill, what that's telling us is you don't have a net force of zero. In other words, your forces going up and down the hill aren't going to be balanced out here. So let's be very careful as we're drawing our free body diagram. I'll just change colors, we'll do blue. Draw my force of gravity first, Fg. Then draw your force of gravity perpendicular, right there, Fg perpendicular. Close it off, make a right triangle right there. Then we'll draw our force of gravity parallel, pulling this toboggan down the hill. But the toboggan isn't actually going to be going down the hill. It's gonna be accelerating up the hill because the child is pulling with a force of 28 newtons. That force of 28 newtons, I like to call a force applied. So I'll draw my force applied, actually pulling this toboggan up the hill. And I'm gonna draw it as a longer line than the other ones, indicating that it's gonna be a larger force because ultimately this toboggan is going to be going up the hill. So a larger line, up the hill is Fa. Now a couple other forces we got to watch here is our force normal coming straight out here. It should be equal in magnitude to our force of gravity perpendicular. It doesn't look like I drew my line quite long enough, so you might well extend that a bit longer. That's better. Um, and then we also need to have a force of friction because we're determining the coefficient of kinetic friction here, which tells us that friction must be present. Remember from the very first slide, I told you that friction opposes the motion of an object. Since this object is being, uh, is being pulled up the hill, this should tell us that our force of friction needs to go down the hill. 
So I just kind of draw another arrow as like a little extension of my force of gravity parallel. Um, so ultimately, if we take a step back now, we need to think about what we're looking for. The coefficient of kinetic friction is what we're looking for. Coefficient of kinetic friction is the Greek letter mu. The only formula we have been given thus far to deal with mu is the one that says your force of friction equals mu, your coefficient of friction, times Fn. Logically, what that means is if we can figure out your force of friction and figure out your normal force, we should be able to figure out mu. Now, looking at our free body diagram, there's not really going to be any easy way to find your force of friction, but there might be a relatively easy way to find your normal force. And that's because your normal force is going to be equal to your force of gravity parallel. Now, I forgot to draw just earlier in here our angle up in the top corner, which was 20 degrees, but that's okay. We know our angle. We're looking for our adjacent side. We don't seem to have any of our other sides, but notice the question did give us the mass of the toboggan. Your force of gravity is just mass times 9.81. So we can say that force of gravity, Fg, equals mass, which is 4.5, times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81. And that gives us an Fg in this situation of 44.145 newtons. So now suddenly, we actually have the hypotenuse of this triangle. We are looking for the adjacent side. Hypotenuse and adjacent from Sokotoa, there we go, Sokotoa, uh, hypotenuse and adjacent is going to imply that we need to use cosine to find that Fg perpendicular. So we can say cosine of 20 degrees is going to equal adjacent, which is uh, Fg perpendicular, divided by hypotenuse, which we calculated because it's our Fg as being 44.145. To find Fg perpendicular, we just need to multiply by 44.145 on both sides, and you're going to see that Fg perpendicular is equal to. 41.4827. Oops, 48. There we go, 4827. And that's Newtons. Now we also notice from our free body diagram that that's equal to our normal force. So therefore, we already have this piece, normal force, of our mu formula. That only leaves one more thing for us to find. We need to find our force of friction in order to use this formula to solve for mu. Now, force of friction in this case is going to be pretty tough to find. I'm going to change colors here just so we can uh, differentiate this from the rest of our work here. Looking for force of friction will be very tricky. If there were no other forces present here, like if this force applied didn't exist, um, and if this block was, let's say, at rest, or sorry, toboggan was at rest, we could just say the force of friction was equal to your force of gravity parallel, but that's not the case here. I want us to go back to this acceleration that I gave. An observed acceleration like this 0, 0.40 is actually part of your net force. And you might remember from the first slide I was mentioning that your net force is not just a mass times an acceleration. Your net force is also the sum of all of the forces acting on an object in a given direction. Now, since the net force is going to be bringing us up the hill, I'm going to say that this applied force is actually our positive force here, bringing us up the hill. And both our Fg parallel and our force of friction will be negative forces bringing us down the hill. Writing this out as a full whole formula showing what our force net is going to be would look like F net equals the forces up the hill, which is just Fa. That's the force applied by the child, minus your force of gravity parallel, which is bringing us down the hill, and then minus your force of friction. Where I'm getting at with this is this is going to be the only way we'll be able to dig out a force of friction. We can calculate net force as being a mass times an observed acceleration. So we know how to get this. The force applied was literally given to us in the question. It's the 28 newtons. Force of gravity parallel, we can find in a very similar way like we did up here when we found our force of gravity perpendicular. We just have to use a different trigonometric ratio, that's all. If we can find all three of these things, the net force, the force applied, and the force of gravity parallel, we can just use a little bit of algebra to rearrange this and find your force of friction. Let's start with net force. 
Net force, as we know from previous questions, that was supposed to be an arrow, there we go. Net force, as we know from previous situations, is just a mass times an observed acceleration. So the mass was 4.5, and the observed acceleration in the question was 0 0.40. That's going to give us a net force, in this case, of only 1.8 newtons, and that's up the hill. Now, we can rewrite this um, as 1.8 equals your force applied, which we know is 28, minus your force of gravity parallel, minus your force of friction. This indicates we're one step closer now to finding your force of gravity, or sorry, finding your uh, frictional force, but we need to find your force of gravity parallel before we can get there. Looking back at this triangle that we drew in the first place, your force of gravity parallel is this bottom side here, which is opposite to your 20 degrees. If you have the opposite side that you're looking for, and we know the hypotenuse FG, opposite and hypotenuse means we should be using sine. So sine of 20 equals the opposite side, which is FG parallel, divided by your hypotenuse, which was your force of gravity, which we knew was 44.145 newtons. So divided by 44.145 newtons. To get FG parallel all by itself, we just need to multiply 44.145 over the other side. And you're going to find that force of gravity parallel is going to equal, let's see here, 15.0985 newtons. We can now take this and come back to this formula. Oh, not quite there, sorry, going too high. We can go back to this formula right here and fill in that FG parallel and find your FF. I'll take it over here so we have a little bit of room. 1.8 equals 28 minus 15.0985 minus your force of friction. Since your force of friction is the only thing left here that we haven't already solved, we can just use a little bit of algebra to rearrange this. So you could add FF to the other side and minus 1.8, so you have FF, force of friction, equals 28 minus 15.0985 minus 1.8, uh, and that's going to equal FF equals 11.1015 newtons. So to conclude this, I told you it was going to be a long question. I'll change colors one last time here. Make sure that worked. There you go. Um, let's go back to this formula that we were focusing in on early on in this problem to actually find our coefficient of friction. We know our force of friction. That was this piece right here. We know our normal force, that was, where did I put it? Our normal force was this piece, there it is right here, it took me a while, this piece right here. That means we can just fill it in the formula, FF equals mu FN. FF we knew was 11.1015 equals mu, which is what we're looking for, times FN, which was that 41.4827. To find mu, we only have one last step to do. We just need to divide away this 41.4827. This gives us mu equals to three, or sorry, to two significant digits, my mistake, to two significant digits, just 0 0.27. And let me remind you that a coefficient of friction doesn't actually have any units. A coefficient, a coefficient of friction is just a measurement of basically how much friction is going to be present on a surface between two objects.